Talk tablet, and I'm going to go through the menus. I'm going to go through the settings and also what are called restrictions, things that you, need, you can do to keep this a single purpose um, speech tablet for an individual so they're not getting distracted or getting lost or finding themselves somewhere else on the tablet running other apps or whatever. So let's start with the menus. <clears throat> so we're going to go to the very top here. And we're going under edit. Now, if you've watched the previous getting started video, you know when I hit edit, you'll see the uh, uh, buttons go into edit mode so you can make changes and so on or whatever. Uh, but let's start at the very top. So cancel, obviously, if I hit cancel, that takes us back out. So we're in just a regular, you know, speaking, using mode. Let's go back into edit again. Um, page. Let's come over here. It says page. If I click on page and edit page. What this does, it allows you to change the number of rows and columns or whatever the items and features specific to this page that we're looking at. So, for example, let me come back out. I'll cancel it. I have a row of four by four. I'm sorry, a page is four by four, but if I have extra ones, of course, we can scroll up or down. But this is a four by four grid. Let's suppose I'd like to increase that to a five by five or, or a six by six or whatever. The way to do that is to go into edit and we're going to edit the page the one we're looking at and you can see here where it says four rows four columns so i'm going to increase that to uh six and i'll make it let's make it uh six columns and seven rows and now I hit save and watch what happens. Okay, so I haven't used up all these other buttons, all these spaces, because I did a, my, my grid that I came from only had this many buttons, but I can start adding buttons and pages to this. So now I'm looking at a six by seven grid. And if I hit edit here, and then I hit add, and add a button, I can start adding buttons if I want. So that's how that works. And then I'll hit done at the top. So you notice I haven't lost any symbols. I've just created more real estate. So as somebody progresses, you can add more but rows and columns. But at any time, you can change this. So if you decide, oh, that's actually, I don't want four by four. I actually want three by three grid because this person is brand new at using it. No problem. I hit edit and I touch page, edit page. And let's take our rows down to three rows and our columns down to three, and I'll hit save. Now you'll see what the other benefit of shrinking down your rows and columns is because the buttons will expand to maximize the real estate of your tablet. So if you want, if you have vision issues, or you simply want to have less choices on the screen, uh, you could at any time change the number of rows and columns. You're not losing anything. We haven't lost all the other uh, buttons that we had on this page uh, because we've gone this but we can scroll up and down to see them you see that how that works so you can do that as well okay so let me take edit page let me put it back to the way it was it was a four by four so four rows four columns safe so we pretty much covered everything under edit that's just cancel. That means done. You finished making your changes. It's like save for that matter. Page. We just talked about page. That allows you to change the, uh, the uh, actually I'll show you one other thing in there. Edit page. In addition to the rows and columns, there's some really cool features in here actually. Um, you can put a page background. You could, uh, the background color of this page, you could change that. And watch what happens if I change the color of the background. I'm going to change the background to a light blue, hit OK, and save. Now, you can't really see it, but behind these buttons, it's, the background is light blue. Because that's what I changed it to. Okay, let me show you what else you can do with edit a page. Background photo. This is really cool. So if you want, if you have a photograph, this is a brand new tablet, so I don't have one. You could choose one of your photographs and, oh, let's use the dog. Heck, we have that one. Let's use that one. Okay, that's our background photo. Now, let me just hit save just so I can show you what we've done. 
can't really see it, but in the background here is the is that picture of that dog. And let me take this one step further. You can create boxes that are invisible over top of that background picture and create hotspots. And the way you can do that is if we edit a button, instead of having a white background, we can make it transparent, which is another cool new feature. So I'll hit edit and I will touch on happy here. We'll edit. See this option here is button transparent. I'm going to make the button transparent and watch what happens. I have my symbol and you can see the, the face of the dog, which is our background through there. If I want, I can take the picture or they take that symbol out of there. So it's not on there. Let me remove that symbol. Coming back up. Da, 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 da. Go to select symbol. And we're going to remove it and then hit save. Okay, you see the eye? So what I'll do, just to give you a just really quickly simple, simple example, I can edit that button and I can say I. Backspace, I am happy out of there. This is my I. But see, so what I'm trying to show you here is you can take a picture of family or friends or whatever, and I'll hit save. And this is my eye. And you can actually create buttons like this, which we'd like to call hotspots in this business. And then you can put over top of a family photograph and you could touch the buttons that are over top of the family or friends or toys or whatever the objects are. And you can create transparent buttons just by hitting edit, touch the button and choose make the button transparent. That's simple. Under edit page, I'm going to show you something else too. Um, we can change the margins. That's the spacing between the buttons. And it's at nine right now. And I'll make that up to 22. I'll hit save. I want you, I want you to see the difference. See the gaps between the buttons. You can see much more behind there. I think that's pretty cool if you want to add that. Um, also under edit page. I know I'm going through a lot, but there's a lot of neat things uh, behind the scenes here. You can change the, 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 uh, the color of the text, which is black right now. You can make it any color you want. You can change the, the color of the borders. Um, you can have labels or no labels. You can turn your labels on and off. You can put the labels on top or you can just leave them on bottom. Labels on multiple lines. You might say um, favorite restaurants and you could have that show up on two lines if you want as your label. Your font size, bold, italics, and border width. So if I want to slide border width up to six and hit save, and you'll see my borders, maybe you can't see it's obvious. They're six now. They're a little thicker than they were, but I can make them a lot thicker. Okay. So I think we've covered everything under edit. Uh, cancel, that means done means save page. I just went through a bunch of those settings. Rows, columns, transparency. Put a background photograph if you want. And then add is simply how we add um, a button or a page button or page buttons. Done takes me out of that menu. Okay, let's go through settings. Current page set. These buttons and all the underlying pages below them are called a page set. And what that means is we've created a sample vocabulary, uh, different types of vocabularies that are part of Talk Tablet. And you can see them by going into settings, current page set. Right now, as you can see, we're using the default page set. But there's all kinds of different page sets. For example, this is, this is a 24 button uh, teen context in portrait mode, which we're holding this tablet right now in portrait mode. If I hit save, here you have a more of a conversing type grammar. About me. Um, already set up for you. I don't want food, vegetables, broccoli. And then I can simply touch up here. I don't want broccoli. Um, and so you see it's a little more advanced level than the previous one, which just has, you know, people, places, and things. This is actually for generating uh, speech. Actions. Um, for more advanced user, let's say. 
Um, under settings, let's go to current page set. Let's show you some other ones. There's different layouts. Here's 24 button. Again, remember the default was 16 buttons or four by four grid. We have 24, we have 20, 16 emerging, 24 landscape, 32 button portrait. Um, show you what that one looks like. So you, I simply select it, hit save at the top. This is the 32 button portrait mode. And you see how quickly you can, we have a really advanced uh, possibilities here for generating communication speech output. Again, talk tablet is for all ages and cognitive abilities from children with autism or other issues to adults who've had stroke who are perfectly literate, but they're not unable to choose whatever words they want to say, but they can if they see a symbol that represents what they want to say. And that's the whole point of it. So don't see these symbols and think, oh, this is for children. It is not, it's for all ages and abilities. Uh, let me go back again, settings, current page set. We also have French ones in here. We have core. Um, I hit choose the core one and hit save. Core is a fascinating thing. Basically, much of what you um, speak and communicate is on this one page. So it's going to rotate up. And really, much of what you'll ever say, you can assemble from this one page. And they're called core words because they are part of our core uh, spoken language. If I move it up a little closer, you can see the words that are there. And then you can customize it with this top row. You might want to say, I'd like to go to dinner with, and then you can have people, your own personalized group of people or family or friends. And of course, touching up here, it would speak it out. <clears throat> so you have core built into it as well. So let me come back here again. And of course it automatically rotates to whatever, however you're holding your tablet. And in this case, we're holding it portrait mode. Settings, current page set. I mean, there's a lot of them to choose from. I mean, we have it from very simple. And what we want, the reason we're showing you this is some people ask, can we use our own pictures and photographs? And that is absolutely yes. Um, that's probably the most important thing you can add to your speech device is family and friends and things that mean something to you. Um, I will, so then we're going to uh, edit. So we've pretty much covered all of that. Okay. Let me go back to settings. So that's how we chose the page set, or let's call it the vocabulary and the, all the samples that are built in there. Or if you decide you don't want to use any of these, you want to create your own from scratch, you, or simply scroll up to the top and touch here on add new user. Type in a name and I'll call it, uh, I'll call it John or whoever. It doesn't matter what name you call it. Just give it a name. It could be a person, whatever. It could be just a vocabulary name. I hit John. Now we have a new John. And if I hit save, there we have. It's blank. And you can start hitting edit, add button, and continue. So you have your brand new clean slate. That's how easy it is to start over with a clean slate. But let me go back. I'll put the default back up here. And let's go through some more settings. So that's page set. Those are the, all the list of vocabularies that are included or the ability to create a brand new one. Default styles. First item is show message bar. If I turn that off, you notice there's no message bar at the top anymore. And not everybody wants a message bar. You can have what you want to say on a Greetings. button. Have you heard? Have a nice day. So you don't need them to appear up here in a message bar to, to create a sentence and then a, you know assemble a sentence and have it spoken. So that would takes that takes the uh, message bar on and off. I'll put it back on, and there it is. Greetings, have you heard? Have a nice day. So you can turn that on or off. Uh, for sometimes for children very young, they might have just a few buttons: yes, no, and. I'm happy, let's go out for ice cream or whatever. <clears throat> and they don't want that. So you can make it really simple if you want and then go from there. Um, font size, uh, that's a, the size of the message bar font. And that's a new feature we've added. And what that is, is if I come back a step, if I put in here, good morning, good morning. this is the message bar font right here. 
I can change that under default styles. I can take my font size, which is at 32, and I can increase it to 45 if I want and see how much bigger it is. So you can, in real time, you can change that. Let's go back into settings, default styles. Um, this is for when you're creating a new button. You can, these are the defaults that it already sets up. So when you create a new button, it's going to have a white background. The, the text is going to be in black and the border will be in blue, but you could change that. So this is only for when you're creating new buttons. Um, when you create a new page, it's going to create a four by four because that's the default set here. But if you didn't want to change, do that, you could change it and so on. Barter widths page, so just your typical page settings. Let's come back a step. Settings, restrictions. Uh, this is very important because, again, depending on the user, you might want to have control of these things. And I think this is probably one of the most important parts of using Talk Tablet. Um, show the keyboard. Uh, if I turn out enable button, highlight button when selected, you can turn that on or off. Uh, show keyboard. If I come back, do you see the icon up here to, to bring up the keyboard? And then it brings up the keyboard down here. For some users, that's too distracting having too much on the screen or the keyboard button or they'll get in there and get confused and not know how to get rid of it. So this is why we have things called restrictions. I can turn the keyboard off. Enable edit mode is next one down. You more than likely don't want the person who you've created these buttons and pages uh, to go in there and start editing or deleting them or making a mess in there, uh, as can easily happen. Um, and how I'll, I'll turn that off and watch what happens. I'll hit save. There's no longer an edit button. It doesn't do anything. So you can't go, the person can't go in there, edit and start changing Good buttons. Night. They can't do it. The edit button has been disabled. Let's go back into settings. So at, enable edit mode. I turn that off. Enable adding items. That's another thing you can turn off if you want to really lock these things down. Um, disable button moving. You may not want the user to move a button around. Let me show you what that means. You know how we move a button. I press and hold it, and then I can uh, put it wherever I want and move it over here, so on. Okay. You may not want the user to start moving all the buttons around because there's, there's, a, there's a strategy for the layout of buttons sometimes, and uh, you really don't want that happening, the, the user messing that up. So go into settings, go into restrictions, and disable button moving. Now they can't move the button. Um, the other features that we have in here are enable sharing and enable copying. And I'm going to turn those on. By default, they're turned off. But if I have those turned on, you'll notice in the upper right-hand corner now, you can send whatever's in the message bar to email, to your clipboard, to uh, your news, news feed on Facebook. You can email them. You can do whatever you want. Uh, that's up to you. You can also copy and paste what's in that message bar. So if I goodbye. had goodbye in there and I hit the copy button, I could go paste it into something on another app if I wanted to. Again, by default, those are turned off because um, on average, I don't know if everybody wants to use those or not. So we'd like to err on the side of um, just, you know, keeping it easy to use. So we'll turn that off. Uh, we had disable button moving turned off, but we'll turn that back on. Last thing I'll mention on this is called the enable repeated tap delay. This, this uh, is a feature that we call the, the save the parents sanity feature. So if I keep hitting this, yes, 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 it'll keep talking yes, and keep yes. talking and talking and talking. And sometimes people will just keep hitting that and it will just drive you crazy. So what we've added here, and this was requested by parents years ago when we first brought it out, um, is you go into settings, uh, restrictions, you turn on the tap delay. And then we turn the tap delay on to, let's say, half a second. So what that will do is it will ignore all the taps except for the one every half. So you have to have a half a second gap between them. Yes. See that? I hit it, I hit it to 
Five, I'll hit it five times and watch what happens. Yes, yes. It put up twice because I put a tap delay of half a second. If I change that tap delay to a bigger number, like three seconds, watch what happens when I hit it five times. Yes. No, no. See, it, miss, it, it, it just eliminates virtually all of that irritating tapping and so on. So repeated taps, I guess would be the best way to describe that. So I'll turn that off. I'm going to turn off the sharing and so on. I'm not going to, I'll put the moving features back on and I'll allow myself to edit and add items. But again, and allow myself to see the keyboard button. But these are all there to keep it simple for your user if you want to. The feet, those are already built into that. Those are restrictions. And that really much covers it. Um, we have under edit, those are the menus. We talked about cancel, done, page. We talked about the, um, the settings. Now, you can't really, when you go into settings, and we've showed you the restrictions. Well, you need to stop a user from going in there and actually making turning those things back on. And the way you do that is under settings, you set a new pin. And you can create a four digit pin number and and now if I hit settings, I can't get into settings. I can't change buttons, I can't move things, I can't do anything in that some restrictions unless I know my code. And yeah, so then I can, I just, I just can't get back, I can't do anything. So that's settings. You wanna set a pin number. If you forget your pin number, use 2468. If you want to delete your pin number, go into set pin number, Put your old one in and then say remove it. So you can take it in or out. But this again stops users from going in there, changing these editing, the settings and causing grief. Under settings, that was restrictions. Set new PN, PIN, a PIN number, which we just talked about. Log into the cloud, talk tablet cloud server. Big benefit of the talk tablet is we have our own cloud server. You can use it for backing up all of your buttons and pages so if it gets lost or stolen or broken you are just fine you'll download it right back all your buttons and pages just the way you had them first thing you need to do is uh, register put, put a username and password in there I'll say um, I'll say and, it, and this again do not use your Google ID and password or do not use an Apple ID and password just this is only for our talk tablet cloud server so let's just keep it real simple if you want GLH and Gordon, I hit login. It says login in progress. And you want to save it? I won't, I won't save that. And it says enable sharing, which sounds great. Hit done. Now, once you've done that, let's suppose you're on your home page and you want to add a button that's on our cloud server. Our cloud server has nearly 10,000 button pages and complete vocabularies at this point. And let's suppose I want to add a, a button called uh, something or other. Let's see what's on the, let's, let's go see what's on the, um, the cloud server. So I hit edit and I hit add. And you see there's a new item now. Before it was add button, add page. But because we've logged in, we have a new one called download. It's retrieving the list of items that are there and Wow, there's a lot to choose from. So let's go, we can sort by username. Let's go ser search by most recent first. And these are all the ones that are listed publicly. Uh, you can, when you upload something, you can create it as private or public. So private only, you'll be able to download it because you need your own user ID and password. Uh, but there's a lot here. You can see how many, you can see how many items are in each one. This one has 888 items. Um, you can choose what language in French or whatever. And let's take one that just has one item. It's this one here. It says one item. So we're going to touch that one. This might be in a different language for all I know. And then hit download. Download has been completed. 
you hit done at the top and the second position is what was downloaded so that was what that file was it was just a simply a clear button um, so want to try another one let's try another one let's go edit add download I don't recommend doing this into a page set that you've created from scratch. I would create a blank page set, an empty one, and that's the best way to download these things, discover you know what's in them if, if you want to use them or not. Um, this one says sandwich, and there's 11 items. Huh, okay, let's download that one. The Talk Tablet Cloud Server is free service. It's part of Talk Tablet, so. You don't have to pay for that. Download is completed. I hit done up here. And it imported all of our... Um, it imp there it is. It popped it right in there. So that was a pre previous download. If I hit on this one... Jus de sandwich. Well, look at that. And these are in French. Un tomate. De la leite. That's cool. And there's a backspace, uh, back, go back button. And uh, yeah, so there you have it. I just downloaded some things off our cloud server um, again there are nearly 10,000 things up there uh, let me show you sorry one more time let me show you how to help you locate what you want on the cloud server because there are so many things up there um, you can sort by username so you can find your people or friends you know based if you know their username and these are only ones that are listed as public you won't see the ones that are private but it, there are thousands of them. You can see I'm barely even scrolling down. Um, you can sort by username, by description. And the description is the first line up here. So right now it's probably, yeah, see it's now it's by description. So we have numbers. So this looks like, um, yeah, there's whole vocabulary sets in here. 24 page, it's all in here. You can sort also by most recent first or by category. Some of these are French. This looks like Danish. And uh, about me, topics. Anyway, there's a lot in there. And you can tell by looking at them. This must be in Swedish or something. And uh, you can go from there. Okay, so I'm gonna, going to hit done. <clears throat> and that, that's how I showed you how to importance. So that was all done into log into cloud server. Now, if you've logged into the cloud server, so now I created a username and password a moment ago, so I'm still logged in. Uh, but if I'm logged in or, you, or when you log in, under settings, there's this other one called backup restore from cloud server. Incredibly important. You should get in the habit of doing this uh, maybe once a month or whenever you feel like you need or you've done a lot of work that you do not want to lose. So you give it a backup name and you'll call it, um, I'll call it July. And no one's going to see this except me because it's connected with my login name. I'm going to call it July 16. And then it says press here to back up. And just that quickly, it is backing up all of your talk tablet buttons, pages, every page set, and all those vocabularies, all the samplings, everything is being backed up to our cloud servers. And uh, it's fantastic. So it's always there. You don't have to worry about it. The upload is complete. Now, if I, um, if I go back out of here now, and then I go into, let's suppose I've got a brand new tablet, and because one was broken, I bought a new tablet, installed Talk Tablet. I could go back into settings. Now remember, this would be completely blank because it's a brand new tablet and I replaced it. And I can go back up Restore. And if I log in with my same username and password, there's my backup I just created. And I'm on an, I could be on a brand new tablet. I could also be on an iPad or a Windows tablet as well because our Talk Tablet data is uh, multi-platform compatible, the data is. So if you have an iPad and you've backed up and it gets broken or stolen or whatever, and you just try to replace it with an Android because they're, they're less expensive and they're equal, um, just that quick, you can have all your all your work is back. You haven't lost anything. 
and you'll be extremely relieved. And you save money by getting a less expensive tablet. Um, that's under settings. Back up and restore. Manage my talk tablet files. Okay. Remember when we went into the cloud server and there was thousands and thousands of files? Well, you may not want to go through all those to find your files. So if you've been uploading your own files uh, monthly or weekly or whatever you've done, they will appear right here. So you don't have to go through the main library on our cloud server. This will pop up with all of your files that you've uploaded. So if you're a school or a teacher and you have your own page sets that you've created, it's really nice with this new feature, manage my talk tablet server files. So you can ignore all the other ones and trying to search and find your things in amongst all of that. They will appear right here and you can touch them and download. So that's really helpful. Um, global, global button settings. Now remember, we have buttons and we have page buttons. Buttons are like a clear button or yes or no. Page buttons are ones that open up. Everything I see on this page looks like it says something. These are just buttons. Okay, so let's suppose I wanted all the buttons in my entire uh, user set, all of these buttons, to have a bigger font. Maybe I decided that these fonts across the board are too small. My user needs, needs them to be bigger. Normally, you'd have to edit every button and increase the font, save, next button, increase the font size, save. It takes a lot of time. So we so these are buttons. So we're going to settings, global button settings, not global page settings. Those are those category buttons, you know, things like greetings or colors or sandwiches or whatever. Button settings. And look what we can do. I can change the font size. I can make it a little bigger. And 30, I'm going to slide it up to oh, let's make it let's make it 45. I hit the save and it's warning me. This will update all the button settings for all buttons with this page in this page set, this vocabulary set. Do you want to continue? And I say yes. Look at that. See how they've all changed to the bigger font? And why hasn't that one changed? Because that isn't a button, that's a page button. Okay, and that's different. Let me go back to my opening to my page. Looking at this screen, the ones that have big fonts are just buttons that say or do something. Yes, no, things like that, right? These are page buttons. So let's do let's do the same. Let's do the global change. All the buttons that are page buttons that, that open up an underlying page, let's make their fonts bigger too. So this settings, global page settings, because these buttons open pages uh, to bold. And we're going to turn this on. Oh, that's too big. We'll make it a little bigger. Font size. And we're going to make it bold. So when we see something bold, it's also a visual cue that this is a page button that will open up another page of buttons. And we'll make the border width. We'll make it extra thick. So if we see a really thick border, we know let's say a page button. And we make sure we check that off. We want to check off the ones that we want to change. Oh, make the border width higher and put a check mark. So it has to have a check mark in order for it to change globally. So what we need to do is uh, change the font. We'll change the font size for all the page buttons, you know, the category buttons. We'll change that to 42, 44. We'll make those bold. So make sure we have, we have to check that, check that, and check that. It wants to confirm you want to change this globally across the board. Uh, the border width, we're going to change that. And we're going to make the border width. Well, I guess we change the border width there. We, 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 we won't change the margin. Well, yeah, we'll change the margin a little bit too. Make it 15. Border width is going to be 10. And we're going to go with uh, bold. Global page settings or page buttons. I hit save. And now you can see what we've done. The borders are thicker on the buttons that open up in underlying pages, and the font is bold. So if you're looking at this page, you can tell these are category pages that open up an underlying button, and these ones are not. They have this, the, the font, the narrow borders. And you can set this up what, however you prefer, and that's exactly what that is for. Setting page thing. 
And that's it. That's all, there, that's all the settings. Um, if you have any questions, please call us at 866-487-1006 or use our live chat at our website at guestsync.com or speechtablets with an S.com. And uh, you have a good day.